So right now we're in Gilmore Hall at UH Manoa campus in the Bingham Aquaculture Laboratory. In Gilmore, we are raising opihi to hopefully outplant them into the wild. So right now we are housing them in our facility um, until we can actually spawn them this fall. So the goal of this project is to be able to restore opihi populations on Oahu especially, um, if not all of the outer islands. But right now the main goal is to get as far as we possibly can to a stable stage where we can take them from in our lab and put them out in the wild to hopefully restore the populations. I got into Opihi because I learned early on in my undergrad that I really liked aquaculture and I stumbled upon this project with a friend of mine uh, when it was first starting out with another grad student that actually mentored me. I really latched on to the project because I liked that it was new and it was innovative and it was using novel techniques that a lot of people never used. Um, and it was also had that cultural thing. Like I'm very close to like the cultural side of my family. My dad is from Mexico, so we do hold on to that cultural aspect of our lives. So I liked that importance it had and what it could do for the community. Nice job. This morning we went out and we picked Opihi. It's actually pretty difficult to do for our purposes because as a lot of people will collect, they will not really care if they scrape it or cut the foot of the opihi. But if we do that, that actually stresses them out a lot. Lower survival rate as we bring them back to our lab. And a lot of those ones with cuts on their feet uh, don't really survive very long once they get here. Opihi collecting is pretty dangerous if you're not constantly watching the waves that are coming towards you. I have myself had a close call uh, a few years ago but it's pretty dangerous if you don't know the size of the waves or what you're looking for. You always have to keep eyes on the ocean. Always go with a partner or if not a group. Um, people, you're easily swept off collecting opihi in several reports. Um, I think the estimate was about 15 people a year die from collecting opihi, and that's just from not knowing what they're entering into. And uh, also before we collect, we usually will kind of keep an eye on the tides, the swells, everything at the site that we collect at for at least a week coming up to it. And of course we check that morning as well. We try to have the safest possible conditions and we also definitely play it safe when we go out there. So once we collect all of our opihi that like we did this morning, uh, we'll bring them back to the lab, kind of acclimate them into our broodstock tanks. And if it's aligning with spawning season, we'll actually spawn them within a couple days of collecting them. So once they acclimate in our environment, they get used to the air, different air, not so much in the wild anymore. Then we'll get them ready to start spawning. We'll put them in their little group speakers and um, start going. So over here is where we spawn our opihi. So once we get broodstock from the wild or from our tanks, We'll put them in these nice grass-lined beakers where we kind of just wait and see until they spawn. It's an overnight process, but once they release sperm or egg, we're able to fertilize and move on to the next stage of settlement. So these are actually our settlement tanks. What we'll do is we will put substrates at angles within these tanks, and they will simulate like a circular movement so that there will be a selective pressure for Opihi to latch onto them. Those tanks were usually previously seeded with navicula that we have over at our algae growing facility off to our right. So we have two things going on over here, but the first and the most important one right now is uh, where we grow our algae. So this is navicula a benthic diatom. So we grow several cultures of this, and this is what our baby opihi eat. So like Mitch said, we seed those into the circular substrates, and we just hope that they start seeding on this so they can grow big and strong. Once they're at a settled stage, we move them into our secondary grow out containers and this kind of just mimics an intertidal situation further and preps them for hopefully outplanting into the wild or further growth to adult stage within our facility. Right now we're going to dissect one of the opihi that we brought back from our collection today. Uh, so the reason we want to look into what their gonads and everything look like is we want to hit spawning season right on the dot. It's only a short window. We only have a couple months, typically around November to March, sometimes longer. 
Uh, so we do leash checks to make sure that we're hitting them at peak maturation. So that means that they're very ripe, full of healthy sperm or egg that they can spawn and we can use to make baby Opihi in the lab. Our biggest break was when we got it to 30 days. Um, we were doing water changes manually by mouth in petri dishes every single day to make sure that they had healthy seawater. And that one actually got to where you could see its adult shell. It was the size of the tip of a pencil, but you can see rings for every single day that they were laying down a new shell. And that was probably our biggest breakthrough we've ever had. From close friends and family members that have lived here their entire life, you kind of learn the importance of what he has to everybody around. Um, just talking and sharing what I do with people that I meet on the beach, they're super stoked about it. So being able to come up with a way to restock the populations um, and keep people allowed to pick and not stop anybody from picking. We don't want to do that. We want to keep everybody, you know, doing the traditions that they've been able to do, but we want to keep them around so they can do and hold those traditions. I want to be able to hold that first opihi that was grown entirely in our lab um, and be able to spawn that one. And then that would, I mean, that would signify the closing of the life cycle, which has never been done. Um, is if we can fully grow an adult in our lab and then spawn that adult. And that would be probably the happiest day of my life. <laughs>